Let's take what we've learned on moray patterns and let's apply that to patterns we can't necessarily get rid of in camera. Go into the folder called wrinkles and there's a file called satin.tiff and it does say satin. I once had a student ask me why is there a file in there called satin. And let's take a look at the wrinkles on this dress here. Now for the most part they don't have the very consistent repeating spacing that certain frequency that the moray pattern did. In that sense it's much more random. But could we use the same sort of technique? We probably could. Take a look at this dress for a second. First off you got to decide what are good wrinkles and what are bad wrinkles? Like I'm guessing this is probably a bad wrinkle. This over here, uh, this down here, maybe that thing there, this little fold where it kind of buckles over on itself. But what might be a good wrinkle in this image? This, well, the seam, yeah, we need to keep that. And the one that comes from the seam up to where it gets by your wrist. Up to here, yeah, this is kind of a tension line. Imagine the bride is facing towards you and she turns a little bit. You're gonna get some tension lines pulling across. Those you'd probably want to keep. I mean, they're natural. If you take them out, it kind of looks kind of spandexy, too stretchy. And this one, this great big sweep that kind of flows down here, that's probably something you'd want to keep. Oftentimes, when people are trying to soften out wrinkles and stuff, they go overboard, they take out absolutely everything. If you made everything in here, if you took out all these wrinkles, this fold down here, this wrinkle, this wrinkle, and you just made it all the same tone, what would it look like? Kind of a flat panel, kind of a cardboard cutout. Really, it's the lights and darks that give the sense of roundness. The light's coming from this direction, and you can distinctly see that this side of the fabric is lighter, this side of the fabric is darker. This is pointed towards the light, this is tilted away from the light. And that's what gives that rounded sort of shape to it. And this natural flow down here, this kind of sweep of the dress down towards the floor, that should remain as well. These little individual wrinkles, though, those should probably get softened out. Now, rather than starting really small and working your way up, like if you go in really close, look at that, there's some little tiny wrinkles here and some tiny wrinkles there. I've seen where people will start, they'll take out this one, so they'll keep this little sweep here. And then they'll zoom out a bit and they'll go, oh, this whole thing here needs to disappear, which eliminates any work that you had done there. So maybe start on a larger scale, decide what you want to keep, in this case, this kind of natural sweep around here, which means these little wrinkles along here we're gonna soften out. Now we don't have that very specific repeating pattern of the moray, so we're gonna have to kind of randomize it a little bit. So let's, let's try this. Make a new transparent layer, grab my clone stamp, 50% opacity, so I just hit S for my stamp, five for 50% opacity. Make sure you have a nice soft brush, hardness all the way down to zero there, and I'm gonna sample fairly randomly, maybe up here. And I'm gonna stay in the same direction of this sweep here, so I'll sample up here, and I'll just clone it down to there. There's before, there's after. Okay, not great. But what if I then came from below and sampled upwards a bit? With a little bit of sampling from below, from above, we can continue that sweep. We can soften out those smaller wrinkles. And there's a before and there's an after. If we decided we wanted to keep this one here, but maybe it gets a little chunky in here, I could grab this bit sample here and push it upwards. Grab up here and push it downwards and kind of average things out a little bit. Be careful when you get near a seam. Again, we don't want to do something like this. That would be bad. And one note about seams, guys. Wherever there's stitches in seams, you're pretty much always going to get these little puckers along here. And sometimes, look at that, that has more of a, a consistent spacing, like a, like a moray. You'll want to soften those Choose an appropriately sized brush, and same deal, I'm gonna use that seam as kind of an edge. Maybe I'll just start right on the edge of the seam itself. Go right in the center there, option click, move down a little bit, and clone. There's before, there's after. Same deal, sample here, and then clone. And we can soften out those little wrinkles, the puckers. So work your way around. Kind of start with the big ones and then work your way in. And a lot of people say, why wouldn't they just you know, steam it or iron it before the shoot? In fact, they did. This kind of fabric is really tough to make smooth. And with a pucker along a seam like that, it doesn't matter how much steaming you do, that's where the fabric is actually kind of pulled together a bit and you're gonna get those puckers. So remember to just stay parallel with any wrinkles you want to keep. Because remember, it's the shading, it's the light and darks that are defining this sweep of the dress down here. If I start going sideways, watch this. Right now, it has a very natural kind of flow down towards the bottom. If I grabbed over here and started pushing over this way, now it starts to look like a big bulge on the side here. The fabric isn't actually darker over here, it's just the way the light's falling on it. So you get to control the shape of the dress by 
adjusting those shadows and highlights. And guys, if you're working on a transparent layer, the nice thing about that is let's say you really messed something up. Let's say I'd done a bunch of stuff over here and it totally wasn't working out. I can take an eraser tool and just erase the problem area. Everything else remains intact. So if you really mess up an area, you don't have to throw out the entire layer. Just erase the problem and continue on. And with a bit of practice, guys, take a look on the screen for a second. You can actually kind of go around corners. Look at this here. We've got this nice sweep of a fold, but then there's these little wrinkles in the center there where it kind of buckled in on itself. Watch this. If I sample from up here and then kind of push into it, sample from below, we can kind of bend that around the corner a little bit. There's a before and there's after. Or even, watch this. You see this little bend in here where it just kind of buckled in on itself. What if I grab from up here and using that kind of preview as an alignment, pulled some of this down, then maybe grabbed a bit of this and pushed it up, blended this in. Now there's a bit of softness over here, but if I take a smaller brush and 100% opacity, you guys remember shift clicking? If I sample over here, do a click, hold down the shift key, we can rebuild that edge. There's a before and after. So we're able to keep the sweep down there, rebuild the corner. And guys, look around as well. Things like in the back here, what's meant to be kept and what's meant to be gotten rid of. Like these little lines here, that's debatable. I mean, these are kind of tension lines. Um, they could maybe stay. These are obviously pleats, so these you'd want to keep for sure. But what about this in here? So look around. And do you only do the wrinkles with this layer? I mean, what if? There was something on her skin. Could we use this layer for some retouching as well? Yeah, there's no reason why we can't. Some people like to break their retouching into several different layers. So, you know, one for wrinkles, one for skin, one for, you know, face. I find if you've got a layer here, rather than making a whole bunch of them and trying to figure out what's what, use it. First off, it'll make a bit of a smaller file when you save it, and you're not looking through like stacks of folders trying to find every single little bit. And let's say you really messed up on the skin up here, and people say, well, then I can just throw out the layer and not have to worry about it. Well, you can simply get the eraser tool, erase the problem area, and start again. So you don't have to make new layers for every single thing you're doing on the image. So guys, kind of work your way around the image. Start with the worst bits first. Wrinkles like this are one of those rabbit holes that you can just keep falling down into eternity. So hit the most noticeable bits first and then move along. So look for hard edges. You can see in the bottom of the dress there, I kind of smoothed out some of those wrinkles and creases.